tomorrow. Hey, congratulations on Mind Cave. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Gracias, yes. Yeah, hey, I I love these type of uh, mystery crime thrillers, but tell tell us how you got on board onto this uh, project. Um, I got involved, uh, you know, yeah, because uh, I start um, writing the story <laughs> and then working with my uh, partner writer, um, Reggie uh, K. O'Hara. Um, um, we come out with the with the, with the storyline and with the structure and, and then with the screenplay. Um, uh, but it, it, it was generated by the idea of doing a, something that has to do with art, mm -hmm. and at the same time with a thriller. You know, I, I, I I'm a big fan of uh, and the supernatural. Those three elements. You know, my background as a fine artist. Um, kind of, I want to do something with see a lot of painting and 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 and, and you know and, and and then i like seven i like the sixth sense and i say how can i make something to combine all those elements and i say well maybe maybe we can make a detective story that with our protagonist being some kind of art crazy artist you know tell, tell me about because i understand you've been an illustrator for many many years um yeah. alongside directing and tell tell us what uh what kind of art that you typically enjoy? Because in the film here, it's more like, a, I want to say like Gothic, uh, angelic, you know, Catholic art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, look, before I came to uh, LA and started working as a, a conceptual artist for those films that you mentioned, I was a fine art painter in Italy. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, 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 as a kid, I went to a monastery to learn from a Franciscan monk. So we were painting in a church actually. So I'm familiar with angels <laughs> since I was a kid. So then I went to Fine Art Academy of Venice and I became a restorator. And I was doing a very classic, uh, like Renaissance style uh, uh, type of painting. And in a movie, some of the painting that you see, I did. Some, some that were done by Roberto Ferri, fantastic Italian painter. And Nicola Verlato, another fantastic painter and artist which kind of we, we grew up together when we started in Italy. So it was a, a nice reunion with them. Um, so, yeah, I like the Gothic, uh, the Renaissance, uh, you know, uh, I'm, a, you know, fascinated about the 16th century Italian uh, Renaissance uh, and, and mannerism art. So, so the concepts of the cadavers, you know, the, because the, the cadavers were quite impressive, the, both the makeup and the costume. All that concept was illustrated uh, by you or you worked with the team? Yes, no, I, I did some sketches uh, with a pencil. I didn't spend the same time that I spend when I do the big studio movie where I have to do the art for those guys. This was just for giving instruction to the people around me. So basically in, in the sketch of those, you have a, three different elements. One is for the art department. So the, for example, they built a cross for the uh, for the church where we put an angel. The other one are prosthetic and, and makeup. So maybe you want to do something with their face, something with their wings. And the other one is uh, for the costume. So those three elements together, the kind of you dissect in a little drawing and you send to all the department. So for the Nava did a great art direction for building the support for those angels. Chintamani did the angels makeup and wings. And then Katarzyna from Poland provide us with those crazy costumes. She's an artist that she does, you know, amazing um, music video and a special costume for, uh, you know, for, it's like a piece of art, you know, it's, it's work, you know. So, but it was not an easy process because we were through COVID time. So one time we didn't have the wings coming in time. So we have to invent the wings to bind feathers, you know? So you can imagine all the things that can happen. <laughs> this kind of production. <laughs> as, as I mentioned before, I, I love these type of mystery th thrillers because you got into the mind of a serial killer where um, in, in a sense, I could easily see how serial killers think themselves as artists. They see themselves as perfectionists in its yeah. own way. And it reminds me of a different movie like Seven, for example. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so uh, how did you want to approach, you know, mystery crime thrillers um, like this? Because I'm not sure if 
because I think you did a lot of action films quite a bit. Well, you know, I, I wanted to approach this uh, somehow when you say seven. Well, seven is a good reference for me because I love the work of David Finch. Um, and uh, I like the mood, but unfortunately, we didn't have that northern raining feeling that you have that. So we have to be, bring more to southern, like true detective type of thing, you know. Um, and and, and, and uh, the approach was how if somebody is a serial killer, right, how can I elevate his motivation? I mean, definitely, there must be a reason why he become what he become, uh, uh, not to justify, but at least to understand what brought him to be where he is. So we had a flashback that I think are very relevant in the story to show him as a kid. And uh, we understand more about his passion for religion, religion art. Not because the religion, religion element, but because those religious painting, they were the best a uh, way for an artist to show their skill. You know, and he want to be like that. Mm. But then the religious goes in his head. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, so to capture the mind of the serial killer, was John Malkovich always been that person um, to, uh, to play this uh, character? Uh, we had a proposed the film to another actor. I don't want to say who. <laughs> um, but then uh, in, in the back of my head, I always had uh, as an idea of uh, Malkovich for this. So when uh, I had to go to him, I was very happy because that was my original intention. And uh, and uh, let me let me let my dog go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry about that. I have a dog okay. in the house. And uh, so, the, um, yeah, so I had an interview with him on Zoom, and he obviously he's bold. And uh, and we talk about the characters, and uh, I thought, like, oh, my God, this is, I, I'm like watching a movie, watching on Zoom, right? Because it has that kind of voice. And I said, oh, that's his him, you know? And then I, 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 I did a painting of him with his uh, long white hair. And I told him, you know, take a look at the way I see you. I think you're like a King Lear. You're like, um, um, you are like, uh, like uh, a prince of the Renaissance. You know what I mean? Like, he's, oh, Leonardo, you know? And he's like, oh my God, okay. That's, you know, I think that, that made him a little more excited, you know? So in, in filming his scenes, it was pretty easy because all you have to do is just do it in one location. Was that, is this all because of a COVID protocols in, in a sense? Well, no, I mean, the, I had to shoot him in a, in a jail because he never lived the jail in the story. Uh, but there is a flashback where he's a little different, uh, um, is a different room. But yes, it takes place, he plays on, uh, um, we have a, a scene that we cut out where Melissa Roxburgh, the investigative the detective, uh, uh, doesn't find him in the cell, and she believes he escaped. Mm -hmm. And uh, we took it out from editing because it didn't really pay off for the story properly the way we wanted. Um, but yeah, is um, yeah, and of course, you know, actually, that prison that you see in the film, we built that on the on the stage of a, of a theater. So the stage of the theater, large theater, like a, I don't know, was like a 15, 1,500 people sit the, uh, in, into the high school of Arkansas. They have this huge stage. And we were looking for a sound stage, actually. We were looking for a warehouse to build a set. And then we were in the school for other reason. And I saw this beautiful theater and I say, I think John Mark, which is going to be back on theater. <laughs> and they say, what are you talking about? He will appreciate that. He's a theater actor. What are you talking about? Well, we're going to try to build the, the cell on the stage. And that's what we did. So that cell is actually sitting on a stage of a theater. Wow. That, well, he is most certainly an artist himself. And, um, and to settle for the detectives, uh, both Martin and Melissa, how, how did you come to the decision with them? And how did you manage to develop their chemistry with each other? 
Um, Martin came uh, aboard um, as is suggested by a producer and uh, took me a little bit as, as a surprise because I, I say Martin Lawrence is the comedian. I say, uh, oh, Mauro, I know you can uh, you can work with him, you know. I say, and so I said, well, let me talk to him. So we had a talk with uh, Stacy and his team and and him, and he was so kind of passionate about the idea to do something where he can challenge himself. When I see somebody that want to take a challenge, I'm always like, uh, I because that's what I do. You know, so I feel like, okay, we're in, you know? And uh, and uh, he, you know, obviously is a, he's a guy that can be on, on stage do stand up comedy and can he can he can talk for two hours. So he knows a book entire book in his head you know so i would never have a problem with him you know perfect from the professional point of view in fact he was um he was great always on time it's great and and uh, um and i like it the chemistry that he created with um with melissa uh you know instead to he he played the underdog and uh he tried to be somebody with uh it's completely his head is crowded with dilemma and and uh, and pain from the past, and uh, and I think he he pulled it out very well. You know, I was worried a little bit. Maybe audience that likes Martin Lawrence and the East fans, they see him, they cannot immediately, they cannot, um, they see him and they don't see him making a face or they don't see him making a funny line and it's like what's wrong they may think something wrong you know mm -hmm. um so it was a little challenging that but i think uh, after watching the movie i think as soon as you start and you go over that you don't uh, you never you never you forget about that he's a that he's a comedian i think you look him as uh, as uh, you will see like morgan freeman or any other great actor absolutely well, Melissa, I, sorry, Melissa is just fantastic. She was the last minute, uh, uh, the last minute show. Uh, that the, she was a choice of the last minute. I was like, I couldn't sleep in the night because I say, okay, we have Lord Markovich, we have Martin Lauren, but we need the most important piece of the puzzle here. And then, uh, thanks God, she came in, and you know, I didn't even see manifest when I, when when I met her, and I uh, saw. So, She's great. And then I saw the manifest and I said, oh my God, that's, that's perfect. You know, like uh, she already has the skill of this type of movie. She knows the language, you know, how detective moves. She, you know, she can be, uh, okay. That was the main element that was looking up for her. It was that she need to have the power and the authority, but at the same time, she had to have the fragility. And uh, it's, you know, it's not the easy things to find because some actress, they're like tough and they're tough. Some, they're very fragile and they're always fragile. How can I, how can she be both? You know, that was my, my, my big dilemma, you know, and she had those two, I mean, she cried, just great, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think you put all the elements together to make a terrific movie and the third act was just so it's a little surprise, right? Yeah. So oh, hey. I want to I want to mention like Robert Nepper because uh, from uh, from uh, prison uh, prison break, the play the sheriff, because he is uh, also an amazing piece of this puzzle of this movie. I really like <laughs> what he did on the movie. But there you are. <laughs> well, whatever you did, you did a terrific job. I can't wait to see what your next project is and have another conversation with you. Thank you very much uh, for talking to us about Mind Cage. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.